Hey everybody, it's time for some more Music 139 video lecturing from Dr. Carter once again and we're moving on to chapter 4 beat subdivisions and syncopation as you can see. Uh, it does get, you know, a little bit more interesting. It gets a little bit more like uh, I can hear some real music here. Uh, music that, you know, without rhythm doesn't move through time anyway. So uh, it's kind of cool to study how it does that even if it looks pretty stilted on the page uh, as printed excerpts. We'll try and make it come off the page a little bit for you here. Um, so working our way toward examples 4.1, 2, and 3, or assignments 4.1, 2, and 3, uh, we cover some topics, especially those of subdividing the simple uh, beat divisions. And when you have a 2-4 bar like they have here for this first excerpt, right, um, you can see that um, there's there's this 1-E uh, <clears throat> e and a 2-E e and a 3-E e and a 4-E e and a uh, kind of thing, where the beat level is still like a march in 2. The level of the division is just 1 and 2 and, and those are still there. But what is also there now is the things in between the numbers and the and so one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a, a lot of times like a a rock drum fill would be something like that and those are all 16th notes uh subdividing the beat into four parts right and you can listen to that uh if you want and uh just taking you through a couple of the bits of terminology here as we move toward worksheet 4.1 you know everywhere where there's a quarter note per beat you're going to have beat and but then you can subdivide it so you get one eanda and that's useful because if you count all 16th notes then it could be one eanda two eanda three eanda four eanda for for one bar and there's all sort of permutations of having 16th notes uh <clears throat> but in combinations of eighths or even the dotted eighth or in the case of with rests like this, you should listen to these. Uh, they, they put a beat in between these, and uh, it sort of goes one and rest, one e and the rest for a beat, one and the rest, one e and 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 so you know, the duration of the note matters. The, where the note, where the note is attacked matters. Uh, let me show you. I get a lot of mileage out of Joplin here, but Joplin, there's some great music there, and, and rhythmically it's very subtle, harmonically it's very subtle, but it's not whacked out, you know, weird kind of thing. Uh, example 4.3 shows incorrect beat. And, you know, when you put these beats together, what's good is if you see where the beat lies with the beginning of each beam group. So one, two, three, three, and four E and a. Now this beaming goes against the idea that four should be the start of a new beam group. And this is much easier on the eye. And if you have to read this down in real time, it's going to be a great help to see that on beat four like that, the new beam. One, two, three, and four E and a. One, you know, one E and two and three E and a four. Whereas this, if I were to do that same second bar there, you know, it just, it doesn't make even sense to me. I can't even do it because I'm so used to seeing this all my life. Another incorrect set of beams is if you have three two meter and the half note is the, <clears throat> is the uh, level of the beat. So one and three and one, one e and the two, three and one and uh, two, two e and the three, one and yeah. So I'm more really used to seeing this beam together, such as it, you'd have if you had the uh, <clears throat> like in this beat pattern, medium short short like that. So the medium short short without them being beam together. So I got tripped up on that. That's my excuse. Um, three two has a funny look. Uh, they're showing it to us because it's out there. Composers have used it historically, dare I say, a slow 3-4 will get the job done and probably look a lot more easy to read than some other things. 
Joplin's um, solace here. Ba -da 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 so the use of the tie gives us this thing where you can't get syncopation uh, across beats, and especially across bars. Now, we don't have any ties going across bars here, but uh, we do right here. And that would be uh, the way to do that. Right in the counts beneath each rhythm. You're going to have to do this in the exercise work anyway, so why don't we give it a little try here. Wish me luck. Get the good old pen up and running here. Uh, I think I want to do that one, two, and three, and, and we're not striking on, on one there, but we would have two here. Um, still an acrobat, so click on this, and get the pen selected. And so I might put a one in parenthesis there, just to say I know that the time is moving by where I would have hit something on one, but you're not really striking on the note because you're tying to it, right? Two, and that's three E and ah, uh, right? And you might put the, uh, that's my and, by the way. It's the same thing as the ampersand. Oh, it shouldn't be the uh, the and, it's an ah. Uh. 3 E and A, uh, and then 1 and 2, but you're not really striking on the 2, and 3. Definitely you want to write something to indicate where in the bar you are uh, for anything that is a note head. And then you might want to show, as they have here, that beat number 2, or at least the front part of it, has passed by while we're still holding on to that note, which is bigger than a whole beat. So one, here we go now. One and three and two, three, a one and and three, one. And I just say one and hold it out long because really two and three, uh, you're holding out. And you can't really do this if it's a snare drum part or a quickly decaying uh, other kind of instrument. But what I, I like to say is you durate this note through two and three. Right now, one more neatly by every two. Uh, I should probably let you guys hear this. In fact, uh, that'd be a good way to do that. I think I have that over here. Let me see if I can do that. Oh, I don't have it there. I have it here, I think. This is a funky looking one, but otherwise it doesn't matter. Right here. So, what does this sound like? What about? this one sound like one e and a uh, and one and e and a one a two and and three a four a three a one excuse me so, two, three. what good does it do to hear it well not a lot if you're just starting to do this it's true but um, what you may want to do is is here, just so that as you do a few more of these, it starts to, to take hold. We've got a one, right? So one, E, and, uh, and then there's your down, your front of bar two. But you're not... 
And no need to put the E or the I uh in here, right? Again, the two is swallowed up by the holding through with the tie. And we have attacks on E and A. Uh. Two should be an E and A. Uh. And then one. I'll sometimes, I'll sometimes for this A uh, say duh, because you're coming out with one E and duh. <clears throat> two. And the one now is held through. And two, the one. So slowly, you know, it really makes sense. The reason you count this is so that you can analyze it to get better at doing it. That's the whole thing about music theory is you ingrain the musical terms and counting ways and devices because it helps us understand how the music goes. There's, there's no one way to understand how it goes, but this can help, right? So. One e and a go, one e and a, and one and e and a one, a two and and two the one. Something like that, right? Not saying it's beautiful. What does it sound like when uh, they do it on marimba? <laughs> This would be one, and you have the answers uh, for the triads and the uh, triad things. Let's clear this page. And I should just stay with this reader. We do you need to get to uh, 4.0? Oh, it's time for 4.1 anyway, so let's just do that. Text out of the way for each of the rhythms below. Provide the missing bar lines that correspond with the meter signature. And this could be just plain old math. How do you get to three beats of quarter notes each and then draw a bar line? That's the whole thing. Is every bar line you're gonna go. There's one, two, three, there's one beat, there's two beats, there's three beats, and the, and the bar line comes there. One, two, three. There you go. And then do we end up with the amount of musical material that equates to a whole full bar of three beats? Yeah, we do with a three beat note that's the dot and half note. Right? Um, just so another bar of, of something here where if we had this four, four, one, and you can do it like this. You can go one, and that's a one and a half beats there. That's a, a half there. All right, two halves make uh, a one. So am, am I getting close to one beat now? One and a half and a half are two, three, four, boom. Right. And the groupings and the beamings should show you. Okay, that's really two eighths where th this is a long and that's a short. So that's one beat right there. Right. Another two eighths gives you another beat. This is one and a half, so one beat two beat, three and a half, there's the other half, and go. I'll let you guys take it out from there. Uh, rewrite the following rhythms with dots in place of tied notes. So the tied eighth plus half of an eighth makes for a dotted eighth, right? So right there. And then this is the same thing, right? And so bum, 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 bum. And another one of these, except now it's not a dotted eighth, but it's a dotted quarter. And then the eighth comes down here, and it's just a flagged eighth now, because it's not beamed to this anymore. We eradicated the beam when we made these two notes a dotted quarter, didn't we? All right. Um, do this. Let's see what else is going on on the worksheet. Come on, puppy. Uh, eight and nine are more of the same, correct? Yeah. And then the beaming you see in part. Uh, the next part here. Right? Um, <clears throat> 
So rewrite each of the following rhythms with correct beating so as to reflect the quarter note beat. 